A new book from Bob Woodward and Robert Costa making a bombshell revelation. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, reportedly calling a Chinese official twice behind then President Trump's back and telling that Chinese official that the U.S. would not attack and he would make sure to alert them should any plans change. Milley was apparently fearful Trump would spark a war, so he went behind his back and talked to China. According to the excerpt from the book in The Washington Post, Milley told his Chinese counterpart, quote, if we're going to attack, I'm going to call you ahead of time. So it's not going to be a surprise. Trump responded last night that he doubts the report is true. However, if it is true, he said, this is treason. Joining me now is former Trump Deputy National Security Advisor KT McFarland. She's also the author of Revolution, Trump, Washington, and We the People. KT, this is pretty blockbuster in this book. Your thoughts, your reaction. Yeah, I mean, he needs to be court-martialed. Uh, first of all, I should resign or be fired over the Afghanistan fiasco. But if he's really talking to America's number one enemy, the Chinese, about our military or potential military actions, or telling them about what the president of the United States is doing, implying the president of the United States is nuts, then I think he needs to be court-martialed. And there will be recordings of this conversation. There will be notes taken. There will be plenty of people who can testify as to what really went on. Yeah, I mean, look, the president, President Trump puts a, puts a statement out, says, uh, if this story, uh, Mark Milley, by the way, the same failed leader who engineered the worst withdrawal from a country, Afghanistan, a U.S. history, left behind many dead and wounded soldiers, many American citizens, $85 billion worth of the newest and most sophisticated military equipment in the world, uh, and our country's reputation. If this is true, I assume he would be tried for treason in that he would have been dealing with his Chinese counterparts behind the president's back, telling China he would be giving them notification of an attack. How—I how mean, this is a decorated military man. I mean, what do you make of such a move? Why would he do such a thing? It's all about politics. I worked with General Milley um, at the beginning of the Trump administration. He always struck me as a guy who was completely confident and had great confidence in his own ability with, frankly, very little— um, evidence to support it. But in any event, he, he's played politics. Think about this interview that he would have given Bob Woodward for this book. When would he have given it? He would have given it after the election. So what's the political objective here? His political objective is to, to signal to the Biden folks, hey, look, I may have been appointed to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff by Donald Trump, but I'm not really his guy. I think he's nuts. I'm, I think he's so nuts I even had yeah. to talk to the Chinese. I'm really your guy. Make sure you keep me for this job. Wow. How dangerous. And by the way, Trump also writes, for the record, I never even thought of attacking China, and China knows that. Uh, but look, we are faced with a real debacle here. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken faced the music yesterday when he testified in front of the Senate on the botched Afghanistan withdrawal. Republicans are slamming the exit as incompetent, a failure. Even the Democratic chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee blasted the administration's handling of the withdrawal. Watch, uh, watch this, KT. Uh, in terms of what went what went down, your thoughts on how he took all of this yesterday, KT? Oh, look, he did what he always does. He bobs and speeds, weaves and spins, and, and basically he's telling everybody, look, we, the Biden administration, had two choices. One, we could have, you know, added hundreds of thousands of more troops and, and stayed in Afghanistan forever, or. We could have evacuated. And anyway, the evacuation we did was following the Trump's plan. That's a straw argument. There were about a dozen options of how to get out of Afghanistan. They picked the absolute worst one, and now they're trying to blame everybody but themselves. And then they're, you know, then they're patting themselves on the back of what a great evacuation it was. Look, this is going to turn out to be the major tipping point of United States power. Now what's going to happen is all the other countries are going to test the Biden administration's ability and resolve. Yeah, it certainly feels that way. I, I find it very uh, discouraging and, and uh, sad, KT. I don't understand why they would not have blown up the weapons, right? I mean, $86 billion of weaponry from guns to other ammunition, Black Hawk helicopters. Why not destroy that weaponry before we left? I mean, now all of this stuff High-end, sophisticated weapons are in the hands of the Taliban. 
Yeah, we have now just created the single most, the largest, most well-equipped terrorist nation in the world. And, and the reason that that lieutenant colonel told you that all the terrorists are now getting on planes rushing to Afghanistan, they've got weapons. They've got terrific weapons. I was in Afghanistan 10, yeah. 15 years ago, and I remember asking the general in charge, you know, what are you going to do with all that stuff when you leave? He said, oh, we have a plan. We're taking it all with us or we're going to blow it up. Turns out they didn't do either one in the end. Unbelievable. I, 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 let's talk about this other story in, in Asia, a return to weapon testing for North Korea. North Korea launched two ballistic missiles off of its east coast overnight, according to South Korea and Japan. What's going on there? Your reaction to that? Now it's the great reckoning. Every country is going to take advantage of what they perceive as the weakness of the Biden administration and do what they wouldn't dare do during the Trump administration. They're now going to push. So North Korea is going to push. It's going to accelerate its nuclear weapons program. China's going to push. You know, China's president won't even meet with Joe Biden. Um, the Russians are going to make a move in the Black Sea and Ukraine. It's now going to happen fast and furious that everybody's going to try to exploit the weakness and, and dysfunction of the Biden administration, Maria. Yeah, by the way, four Chinese Navy warships apparently spotted sailing just outside the U.S.'s exclusive economic zone late last month. This is another development I wanted to get your take on. The Coast Guard personnel photographed four warships just outside U.S. territorial waters uh, near the Aleutian Islands. These Chinese vessels included a guided missile cruiser, a guided missile destroyer, an intelligence vessel, and an auxiliary vessel. The Coast Guard says it doesn't believe the vessels extended the U.S. exclusive economic zone, but just passing by, KT, taunting the U.S.? Yeah, so this, yeah, it, absolutely. I mean, this is the Chinese approach. It's called salami tactics. You know, this time they got right up to the zone. Maybe next time they go a little past it. They're doing the same thing with Taiwan. China plans to claim the South China Sea as an internal Chinese lake. They decide who gets to go in and out of the world's most important maritime trade route. And frankly, they want to push the United States out of the Pacific all the way back to Hawaii, potentially all the way back to the west coast of the United States, Maria. Oh, wow. KT, great to get your insights as always. Thanks very much. We'll keep watching all of this. KT McFarland joining us this morning. Thank you so much.